all the mistakes you've made shake them off don't let them shape who you are shake don't shape don't let them shape your expectation of what's coming next no shake those things off and guess what will happen your story will change just like those people changed their story about their narrative about Paul instead of he's gonna die they said he's a god <laughs> all because he shook it off All right, champions, welcome back to Think Like a Champion. This podcast is dedicated to helping you win in every way and enjoy every day. And today we're going to dive into the power of persistence, perseverance, endurance. It's all in the same category. But before we dive in, I want to thank everyone who's written a review or shared this podcast on social media. Thank you. And thanks for helping us expand our community of champions, because that's what we're here to build, a community of champions with a culture of champion thinking. Every post, every review, it really does make a difference in helping us reach more people. So thank you and keep on sharing. Sharing is caring, right? So let's kick things off with a few words that capture the essence of persistence, one of the great characteristics that God created in mankind, the power of persistence. One of the presidents of the United States years ago, Calvin Coolidge, he said, nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. He said, talent cannot, and nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. He said, unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts, he said. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. Now, we know God is omnipotent, but he said, Determination and persistence and patience alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on. The slogan, he said this, the, the slogan, press on, I love this. Press on has always and will always solve the problems of the human race. Whatever problems we face, press on is the solution. What are you going through right now? Press on. What are you experiencing difficulty in? Press on. You're having financial pressure, financial problems, press on. You're having problems in your family, at home, with your kids, with your marriage, press on. You know, there's something about just kind of picturing in our mind a little button that says on and pressing it. A button on here that says press on. Like we, we, we press on and we stay with it until we win because we're either winning or we're learning, but we are not losing. OK, let's let's go over a powerful verse that resonates on this topic of persistence. Luke, chapter 21, verse 19, Jesus said, through your endurance, through your patience, through your persistence, possess your souls. Now, the possessing of your soul, it, it, it means it doesn't mean to be possessed by a devil or possessed by demons, but it does mean possessed by you. In other words, Jesus says it is through persistence and endurance that we take control of our lives, that we take control and possess our soul. Our soul is either going to be possessed by worry, anxiety, and, 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 and impatience, or our soul is going to be possessed by self-control, by persistence, by confidence that everything's going to be all right. Now, everything's not going to be all right when we quit up, when we give up and quit. But it is going to be all right because we're not going to give up and I'm not going to let you quit. So just as President Coolidge mentioned, it's the key. Persistence is the key to success. And here are three aspects to consider about persistence. It's it's unrelenting determination. That's I want you to think about that. It's unrelenting determination. The importance of persistence and determination in achieving success it cannot be overstated. The word for endurance or perseverance in the Bible is hupomene. It means to stand under. It means to endure and to sustain in faith and hupomene, in, to remain under the worst circumstances, to remain. Remain calm, remain praying, remain 
kind. There's certain things that should remain while we're going through something because we all are dealing with trials. Uh, I got a whole file. Um, I had to categorize them and alphabetical alphabeticalize them all, all of my trials. There's so many that I've been through and I'm sure so many that you've been through. But when you will stay and sustain in faith and patience and just stand there, just hang in there, just stay with it. Listen, life's challenges are something we gotta, we're going to run from or we're going to run to. But there's no, there's no standing in the middle. There's no middle ground. Either run to the challenge and face it and confront it or run from it. That is, what, that is why we have adrenaline. Adrenaline is the release of the chemical cortisol in our body to give us the fight or flight response. So when something attacks us, when something comes against us, when something is heavy towards us, when we're in a moment of crisis, we have a fight or flight adrenaline rush. What does that do? That gives us the ability to, in some cases, there needs to be a fight and it gives you the energy, the added strength and energy for the fight or the added strength and energy for the flight. So there are certain things you should run from, but the trials that we have in life are something we need to run at and we need to face and attack and dominate. Well, I think there's this word in the Bible that too few of us are talking about or too few Christians have this word in their mind. It's, it's the word dominion. You know, God said it in the first chapter of Genesis. He said, I give you dominion. I give you the power to rule over every creeping thing and to have dominion in this earth, to have dominion over darkness, to have dominion over fear, to have dominion. It, it's taking dominion. It's, it's taking, it's seizing territory. Man, you will feel so rewarded in life when you go and grab territory in life, when you go and take an area of your life and the area of your greatest weakness. Go and confront that greatest weakness and take dominion in that area of your life rather than, oh, you know, everybody has weaknesses. Of course, we all have weaknesses and at various times in our life, it's different types of weaknesses, but we're still meant to conquer them. We're still meant to strengthen our weaknesses. We're still meant to Trust God for his strength in the midst of our weakness. Now, in the face of adversity, remember these things. Let me give you a few thoughts to remember. I want you to remember about keep going. I want you to remember these words, keep going, because uh, Winston Churchill said something very powerful. He said, if you're going through hell, keep going. Boy, who is connected to me right now that would say, Phew, yeah, if I could cuss right now, if I could describe what I'm going through and, and swear about it, yeah, I'm going through hell. Well, listen, if you're going through hell, keep going. And it's really, it's not a bad, it's not that bad of a word. So we're okay with that in the right context. All right, so if you're going through hell, keep going. I, I, I love what David said about that in Psalm 23, verse four. I think we miss this sometimes when, he said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, though I walk through the valley. Now, we know the, the rest of that verse, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. But the first four or five words of that passage is uh, that's the those are the best words. He says, though I walk through, though I walk through the valley, though I walk through the valley, Notice what he says. He says, I walk. That's one key takeaway from this verse. I walk. In other words, don't stop. Keep walking. He said, I walk through the valley. In other words, there are going to be valleys. Don't, some valleys. Don't be in a hurry to run through them. He said, I walk through. You know, walking is, man, studies have been done about walking. Scientists and doctors and experts have found that walking is the greatest exercise for your body besides uh, weightlifting, besides 
uh, weight training. Literally walking is many experts believe it's better than running. It's better on your knees. It's more sustainable. It's something everybody can do. It's something that anybody can start and improve at. So life is a walk. Yes, there is the we'll mount up with with eagles. We'll, we'll mount up with wings as eagles and fly. Isaiah talks about we'll run and not grow weary as Isaiah talks about. But then he, he talks about the third one that I think we we skip sometimes because we're so focused on making sure we're running or making sure we're flying. But he said, and I will and, and I will walk and I will walk. He said, uh, though we mount up with things, wings as eagles, run and not grow weary, we walk and do not faint. You know, if all you do is fly, you'll faint. If all you do is run, you'll faint. But if all you do is walk, you'll never faint. Now, there will be times of flying and there will be times of running. But if in, outside of those times you're walking, you're going to make it. Though I walk through. Now, that's another great takeaway from this verse. He says, walk through the valley. Like walking through something means don't try to find shortcuts. Just walk through it. The best way to the other side is through it. The best way to overcome the trial is just go through it. Rejoice. Count it all joy when you encounter various trials. I love what Martin Luther King Jr. said. He said about embracing progress and resilience. He said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. Boy, that really sticks with uh, that really goes well with that verse, doesn't it? Um, let me talk to you about in this next segment of, of this podcast. Let me let me talk to you and about the power of progression for a moment, because I think when we talk about pressing on, we we sometimes want and expect immediate results and we we want finished results. We want the finished version of results and we we Life doesn't work like that. Life is a progression of evolving, a progression of progress. I would argue that the happiest people are not the people that are always on the winning side of something, but the happiest people are the ones who are always making progress. I think, uh, and I think this can be backed with science. I don't have the data in front of me, but progress is almost always associated with happiness. So when you're making progress, even if it's a little, it produces happiness. And, and, and why that's so important is because happiness produces chemical, chemicals, natural chemicals in our body of, that, that are the pleasure chemicals, the chemicals of, in our brain that produce pleasure. And produce love and these are powerful forces so pro progress is happiness progress is success progress is growth progress is winning when you're making progress you're winning so uh, let's talk about this progression and look for this pattern in the bible in philippians chapter 3 verse 13 paul says uh, brethren i do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet the finished product he's talking about, the finished life, the, the fullness, he says. But one thing I do, he said, I, I haven't laid hold of everything that God has for me. I haven't laid hold of all the victory I'm supposed to walk in. I haven't laid hold of all the finish lines I'm supposed to reach. He said, but one thing I do. And he, he, says, he says one thing, but there's three things here. This is, this is why this is so important that you understand the power of progression. He says, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now notice he says there, this one thing I do, in other words, all three parts of this are part of one thing. He said, I haven't reached the goal yet. I haven't finished the race yet. I haven't won all the prizes of life yet. I haven't fulfilled and done all that God's called me to. 
yet. But one thing I do, I, I, he says, I haven't, I haven't got it all yet, but one thing I do, I haven't done it all yet, but one thing I do, and, and, he, and he tells us the three things uh, in the one thing. This is what's so powerful. He said, uh, forget, forgetting what lies behind. So we got we to gotta get good at forgetting. We got to get good at forgetting our mistakes. We got to get good at forgetting what people have done to us. We got to get good at forgetting our limitations. We got to get good at forgetting how we grew up. If it was a limited environment and if it wasn't always an environment pushing us up, forgetting. We got to forget the things that lie behind. We got to forget the things that we've had to sacrifice. We got to forget the, even forget the accomplishments, forgetting, 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 forgetting. There is something about the skill of forgetting. This is a good skill that you need to acquire in your life as a champion. This thinking, this champion thinking is forgetting, forgetting, forgetting. We don't want to be forgetful people of the things that matter, but we want to be a forgetting people. You want to be a forgetting person of your mistakes, forgetting what people have done to you, forgetting all the trauma you've experienced. And there's healing in the trauma. There's healing from trauma. But sometimes the healing is just forget about it and move forward. Forget about it. Shake it off. Remember when that viper jumped out of the fire when Paul was on the island of Malta? He was stranded with the people that he was on the boat with. They, they got shipwrecked. They were taking him as a prisoner to, to Rome to be to be tried, sentenced, tried and sentenced and killed. And on the way there, they, they went through a storm. They got shipwrecked in the last chapter of the book of Acts. And it says that um, Paul, when they were shipwrecked, he got out and they were all the ones that were saved. And they got out and, they, and he started to build a fire. The people that were around that were, you know, from a different culture. These are the natives of that particular island in, at that time in Malta. This is 2,000 years ago now, think about it. And he was gathering some sticks to build the little fire for the people around him. And the Bible says that a viper, a venomous viper, a venomous snake, a venomous creature leaped out of the fire and latched itself on him and bit him and all of the natives they knew that that was a poisonous bite and he was they were expecting him to die within the next seconds within the next minute and when he and they said surely he's bad and God is judging him and that's why he's about to die and what did he do he the Bible says he literally shook off the viper and he was fine he was well he shook it off and at first, when they said, oh, God's judging him for that's why that viper bit him. He's going to die. Then when he shook it off, they said, oh, he's a God. Let's worship him. And he didn't want them to worship him, obviously. But you see how their story changed when he shook it off. You see, life will change your story. Your story is going to change for the better when you shake off whatever has stung you, whatever has bit you, whatever has latched itself on you, whatever emotions and habits and, and the offenses that people have, have perpetrated towards you, shake them off. All the mistakes you've made, shake them off. Don't let them shape who you are. Shake, don't shape. Don't let them shape your expectation of what's coming next. No, shake those things off and guess what will happen? Your story will change just like those people changed their story about, their narrative about Paul. Instead of he's going to die, they said he's a God, <laughs> all because he shook it off. What story might change in your life if you'll just shake off what you're facing right now? Shake off what's been done to you. Shake off the failure, the mistake that you made. Shake it off. Shake it off. What that person rejected you, shake it off. It's what great salespeople have to learn how to do is they have to shake off rejection because they're going to face a lot of it. They got to shake it off and move on. And the quicker you're able to shake it off, the sooner the story will change, the sooner you'll succeed. Boy, if we get a hold of what forgetting really means and make this acquire this skill and develop this skill, you know, you can learn anything on YouTube these days. But if you really want to learn to be happy and succeed and win in life, you got to learn the art of forgetting and shaking things off in your life. 
forgetting what is behind. Whatever is behind is there for a reason. There's a reason why the windshield of your car is so wide, but the rear view mirror is so small. It's really, I, I, think, uh, I think I read somewhere, it's, one, it's 5%. The, the rear view mirror is 5% size of the windshield. What does that tell you? It tells you that we need to be, we need to be facing forward. Yeah, 5% of the time we're going to have some things that are bad in our life that we got to look in our rear view mirror, but focus on the 95% of what's in front of you. Don't focus on the 5% behind you. The magnitude of what's in front of you is so great. The potential and the success and the wins that are in front of you are so great if you will put your mistakes and your failures and what others have done to you, if you put them in your rear view mirror and truly treat them as one fit uh, as five percent of one twentieth is what that is five percent of your focus ninety five percent of your focus needs to be going forward hey if you have to look back and fix something if you have to look back and apologize to somebody if you have to look back and and get some therapy about something go for it but that should be five percent of what you focus on you have a windshield and the world is in front of you and the journey is in front of you and the power is in front of you and the, the greatest days are in front of you. It doesn't matter if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. Your greatest days are still in front of you. As long as you can drive, you have a windshield. You got great days coming. There is a future for you. There's a horizon you're headed towards. There's a better path. There's a journey. There's a destination. Keep making progress. That's where the happiness is. How's this progress made? In stages. Forgetting. He says, forgetting what lies behind, reaching forward. Wow. How often are we reaching backwards? Too many times. Reaching forward, reaching forward, reaching forward. It speaks of stretching. It speaks of yearning for something better. It's, it speaks of living forward rather than living backward. It speaks of living with anticipation rather than living with regret. Reaching forward to what lies ahead. So that's part two of that one thing. One thing I do, forgetting, reaching forward, and then he says, I press on. I press on. You know, I'm a pastor. You see me here as a coach, as a teacher, an inspirer, encourager, influencer, whatever you people call that. But I'm a pastor in my heart and in my purpose and calling. And the thing that matters to me as a pastor is seeing people making progress and is seeing people moving forward. And it's helping people to focus on one thing, forgetting, reaching, and I press on. Now, so as a pastor, I believe we need each other. I believe that we are supposed to be a part of a community. I believe we're supposed to be a part of a church family. I believe that every person, every human being was made by God to be in a physical family and to be in a spiritual family. Now, some of our physical families and even our spiritual families have abused us, misused us, uh, refu refused us, but it's still, we should still find our people. We should still find our tribe. We should still find where we belong as a church, in a church family. And in saying that, I also want you to understand the beautiful tension between the fact that we need to be on this journey with others, but there are certain things you got to do alone. Like there are times to pray with others, but there's also times to spend God, spend time with God by yourself. And I think this is a very powerful word when he says, I press on. He's not saying we press on because the first three guys, the, the first three Christians that helped me in my journey, that led me to the Lord, baptized me when I was 17 and um, taught me the things of God at, at, in my earliest days as a Christian, all three of them backslid. All three of them walked away. 
all three of them pressed off <laughs> rather than pressing on. Uh, now, I've heard from all three of them since that time. And they wish they wouldn't have pressed off. They wish they would have pressed on. But I think I've tried to encourage each one of them to just start where you are right now. Press on. Yes, it speaks of enduring and persevering and moving forward. But it also speaks of pushing the on button, pressing the on button, like flipping the switch. I'm flipping the switch. I'm pressing on because I want light. I'm pressing on because I want to work. I'm pressing on because I want to succeed. I'm pressing on because I want to advance. I'm pressing on because I don't want to stay where I was. You know, if you will just respect the concept of progress, it's not just here, but, the, but it is here in Philippians 3. He said, I, I'm forgetting what lies behind. I'm reaching and I'm pressing. This is progress. It's also described in Mark chapter 4, verse 27. Jesus said, when a man plants a seed, he said, the way it grows while the man is sleeping, first the blade, then the head, then the mature grain in the head. First the blade, then the head, then the mature grain in the head. Notice the progression. Notice the commonality of this progression of three. There's something very powerful. If you do something twice, it's, it's just maybe a coincidence. If you do something once, it could be an accident. If you do something twice, it could be a coincidence. But if you do something three times, it begins to be a pattern. And I think that pattern is how we need to see life, that we, we need to press on. We need to see that, that progression is in stages, and it's throughout Scripture. So we have it here. We have first the blade, then the head, then the mature grain in the head. We have in uh, Romans chapter 12, we have um, what he says, the good will of God. Renew your mind so that you can experience the good will of God, the acceptable will of God, and the perfect will of God. So we see those three stages there. We see another place where Jesus said 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. We see in, in the book of 1 John, we see that he mentions, talks about the stages of personal growth as children, then young men, then fathers. Children, young men, then fathers. Notice in all of these examples, there's a, a progression of three things. And because something happens when you do something a third time. Something happens when you, when you do something a third year. Something happens when you keep at it and endure and realize there's always room for progress. Victor Hugo said something very powerful about it. He said, perseverance is the secret of all triumphs. Perseverance is the secret of all triumphs. And somebody actually said, triumph, which is victory, right? Not trial, but triumph is just some umph added to a try. You just got, you just got to put some umph you got to try and put some umph to it. And if you put umph to it enough times, you will experience triumph. Triumphs. All right, it's a tough word to pronounce, right? All right, we're out of time. So I got so much more I want to share with you. Do not miss our next podcast. Thank you for joining me on Think Like a Champion. Share this with someone who needs to hear it. Subscribe to the podcast on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. And thank you for those of you who are giving. And I don't take enough time with this on our podcast to invite you to give, but I, I really want to ask you to help us out to reach more people. I don't want to try to raise money, but I want to try to change lives. And the more that we can get everybody participating and partnering with this vision to create a community and culture of champions, then the more we can reach more people. So would you go to lifechangerschurch.com slash give and make the best donation you can. It's tax deductible. We're a church, a nonprofit organization. So I really would appreciate it. Lifechangerschurch.com. And the people that you're going to impact are going to appreciate it more than me. And that's what matters most is that we just reach more souls and help more people win because that's who God created. God created you as a winner. You're a winner. You're born to win.
You're not born to fail. You're born to win. Believe that about yourself. Well, until next time, stay persistent. Keep reaching forward. Keep forgetting behind things. Keep reaching for the forward things and press on and stay on and everything's going to be all right. God bless.